In part C, we want to calculate these expected values. So let's start off with the expected value of x. So by definition, you go from negative infinity to positive infinity of x multiplied by the probability density function. So this is by definition the expected value of x. And you can see that this is an odd function. And if you're integrating an odd function from negative of something to positive of that something, you're going to get 0. So in case you don't know, an a odd function is would be a, a function that would look something like this. So if you integrate from 0 to positive a, you'll get a certain amount of area. And then if you go from negative a to 0, the amount of area over here that you get will be negative, and it will perfectly cancel out all the area that you have over here. So if you integrate from negative a to positive a, the total area is just going to be equal to 0. And this is exactly what we have here. Uh, one way to check if a function, let's say if this is a function f of x, one way to check if this is an odd function, you just substitute in f of negative x and see if it's equal to negative of f of x. And you can see that it is definitely true for this expression over here. So if you're integrating from negative infinity to positive infinity, you get something like this. And that's why the resulting uh, integral is equal to 0. So this is how you find the expected value of x. So for the expected value of momentum, this is just equal to the time derivative of the expected value of x. So if you're differentiating 0, you're just going to get 0. So this is the expected value of momentum. So now let's set our sights to the expected value of x squared. Now this time we can't we can't use something, we can't pull a trick here and say it's equal to 0 because this integral is not equal to 0. So we're going to have actually have to evaluate this expression. So you have x squared multiplied by the absolute value square of the wave function. So you take the absolute value square of the wave function, you just get the absolute value square of your constant a. And then this e term over here, it cancels out. So if you take the conjugate and then you multiply it with the original, it just cancels out. And then here you have this term and you just square it. So in the end, the absolute value square of your wave function is just equal to e to the power of negative 2am x squared divided by h bar dx. So you can see that, so I can just pull this constant out over to the outside. So let's just rearrange this a bit. So from negative infinity to positive infinity x squared. So you can see that we have an integral that we need to solve. It's x squared multiplied by e to the power of negative some constant times x squared. So how do we evaluate an integral like this? So we're going to use a trick over here. So first of all, notice that the Gaussian integral this expression is equal to the square root of pi over k. So we're going to use this result. You can prove this with a double integral. I'm not going to go through that. But let's say we already know this result. And let's say this expression is equal to f of k. Now I'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to k. So I get f prime of k, which is equal to this integral uh, int differentiating with respect to k. So I can just move the uh, derivative with respect to k inside of the integral because there are no k terms over here. So effectively, we will be uh, differentiating this term. And you can see that if you differentiate this, you get negative x squared e to the power of negative kx squared dx. And then here, this is just pi, uh, square root of pi times k to the power of negative 1 half. So differentiating this, you get negative 1 half, and then you have your pi, and then k becomes negative 3 over 2. And so you can see that this integral is equal to this expression. So I can just take away the negative sign and dump it over to the other side. So if we have an integral of x squared multiplied by e to the power of negative kx squared dx, then this expression is just going to be equal to uh, taking away the negative sign. So these two negative signs, they cancel out. So this is just equal to the square root of pi divided by 2, and then divided by uh, k to the power of 3 over 2, which is just k times the square root of k. So now we can use this result. We know that this integral is equal to this expression, and then this integral is actually of the same form as this integral, where you can see that the k is equal to 2am divided by h bar. So now we can substitute in this result over here. So we know that this integral is equal to the square root of pi divided by 2k. So I have a k in the denominator. That just gives me h bar divided by 2am. And also don't forget there's also a square root of k. So that just gives me square root of h bar divided by 2am. And then don't forget your constant a squared. So in the last video, we found that 
uh, a is equal to 2 a m divided by pi h bar to the power of 1 fourth. So a squared is just equal to the square root of 2 a m divided by pi h bar. And you can see a lot of these terms, they cancel out. The pi's, they cancel out. h bars, they cancel out. 2 a m, they cancel out. And so essentially, we're only left with these terms. So you get h bar divided by 4 a m. So this is your answer. This is the expected value of x squared. Now the next challenge is to evaluate the expected value of p squared. And by definition, this is just equal to the conjugate of the wave function uh, applied with the momentum operator squared. So this momentum operator squared will be applied to the wave function dx. So I can pull these constants out. So h bar divided by i squared, that's just equal to h bar squared divided by i squared. i squared is just equal to negative 1, so we got negative h bar squared, so I can just pull this out. So we have the conjugate of the wave function, and then multiplied by the second derivative of the wave function with respect to x. And then recall that in the, in the last video when we were looking for the potential that gives us this wave function, we found we had to find the second derivative of the wave function. So I'm just going to use that result again. I'm not going to prove it again. So last time we found that the second derivative with, with respect to x of the wave function is equal to 2am divided by h bar times 2am x squared divided by h bar minus 1 times the wave function itself, dx. So now we're ready to evaluate this expression. So we can just pull out the 2am divided by h bar. So I'm just pulling this out. And then inside the integral, you have two terms. First of all, you have 2am divided by h bar. This is this term. And you have x squared over here. So x squared. And then these two uh, these two terms, the wave function and its conjugate, they come together to give you the wave function absolute value square. So uh, this will be attached over here. And then here we also have a minus 1. So we also need to minus the wave function absolute value square dx. And then you can see that we can evaluate both of these terms pretty easily. So let me just copy this out one more time first. So here you can see that I can just pull this 2am divided by h bar out. Once I do that, inside I get x squared times the absolute value square of the wave function, which is just exactly equal to this term, which we found is equal to h bar divided by 4am. So this term is just equal to h bar divided by 4am. And then this term, integrating the absolute value square of the wave function. This is just the probability density function. So by definition, integrating this, this just gives us 1. So I can just put minus 1. And then immediately you can see a lot of these terms that cancel out. So this is just equal to 1 half. So you have 1 half minus 1. So this is equal to negative 1 half. So we have negative h bar squared times 2am divided by h bar. And this is equal to negative 1 half. So good thing that negative sign they cancel out. This h bars they cancel out, these twos they cancel out. So in the end you have a m h bar. So this is your answer. This is your expected value of momentum squared.